Now, one thing I want to show you is there's actually a really handy uh, package that can help us analyzing things. And it's called Quantstats. Mm -hmm. And let's just, uh, let's just get Quantstats. So what we can do is we can, um, in, we need to install it uh, here. We go pip install um, Quantstats. And so this is a package that that gives us a lot of statistics. And then uh, what we also need to do is we need to import quant stats as I usually import as QS. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now we've got quant stats. And so I don't want to go too deep, but I want to show you what you could what quant stats can do, and it's pretty cool. So what we can do is QS dot reports dot full. So this gives us a full report of what we're doing. And then what we can do is we can uh, put in our um, our data frame. This is basically our un, uh, our unrealized returns. And then what we can what we should also put in here. So Quantstats is a really good package. And what it asks you for is basically your your strategy returns and your benchmark. So what we do is spy.close.pct change, yeah? And so hopefully this will run and will give us the performance metrics. Wow, look at this beauty here. <laughs> so, so there we go. Now this is basically analyzing all your, all our, um, all our stuff, all in one go automatically, right? And that's that's really, really cool. So look at this, for example. Um, here, you know, we get the start and the end period, and it's always says strategy and benchmark. Now, there's a bunch of things that we see here. For example, a cumulative return, 145% versus 241. So do you remember when we talked about non-cumulative and cumulative return? when we talk about the cumulative product and the cumulative sum. So mm -hmm. basically non-cumulative return is when you always invest the same amount of money in every trade. Let's say you have a thousand dollars and every trade you trade, you invest a thousand dollars. So if you lose, then you add a bit of money again to the thousand dollars. Or if you win, then you take the profits and put them in your pocket. Mm -hmm. Cumulative return is basically when let's say you make $10 on your thousand dollars, and then the next trade you put in one thousand and ten dollars. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's it's the accumulation, it's the accumulation of your returns. Okay, so here we make obviously quite a lot less cumulative than we do with a benchmark. Then this is what's called CAGR, compounded annual gross return. So this is the annual annualized compounded return of the strategy. So compounded return is basically a cumulative return. And so it's basically a compounded percentage return. This is something also interesting to look at. So with uh, the S&P 500, we make close to 10% with our strategy about 7%. Yeah. Then look at this, the sharp ratio here. Hey, we got the same sharp ratio as this package. You remember 0 0.63, 0. So oh, we're a little bit better <laughs> in this. Um, so obviously there's a lot of metrics here as well. And, and we want to sort of, uh, you know, uh, we, we go through them a bit later. All these metrics are effectively the fingerprint of your strategy. This is how I want you. So when you look at strategies later on and you analyze them, you want to really understand, oh, this is the fingerprint of my strategy. So you can see here, um, I, Drawdown, Re remember our drawdown was uh, 34.1 and 20. So, hey, we're, 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 we're basically getting the same as the, as the proper package. Now, um, there's a lot more here. Uh, you know, there's like, what is the risk of ruin? You know, 0%. There's many, many other things here. This is interesting. Maximum consecutive wins, 8 and 14. So, so um, you know, um, consecutive losses. There's cons less consecutive wins, but also consecutive uh, uh, losing 
losing days, so that's good. <laughs> um, and so there's a lot more things that we may look at uh, at some later time. Uh, look, there's this funny thing here called the ulcer index. <laughs> So it's basically uh, the lower it is, the less you have a chance of stomach ulcer. Mm. And in both cases, the ulcer index is reasonably modest uh, with about 6 or 7%. Uh, so it's not too bad. And there's this sort of a similar thing called the serenity index. But uh, one, one interesting thing that I really want to point out here is this beta and alpha. So beta is effectively the correlation of your strategy with the benchmark. And mm -hmm. you want that to be as low as possible because if it's high, then you may as well just trade the benchmark. The other thing is, if it's low with regards to the benchmark, you could, for example, have a number of strategies and you combine them. And if their correlations between them are quite low, then what happens is, and you, we will see this a lot later, their profits will effectively add up because because of the low correlations, all the all the little random ups and downs of all these strategies, they will cancel out and the profits will add up. And so low correlations between strategies are really, really important and really they're really useful and really helpful. Okay. So 0 0.3 is sort of just on the edge of what I consider a good strategy with low correlation. So it's actually pretty good. So one thing you could, for example, do is you could combine, when you have correlation as low as this, you could combine your strategy with the underlying um, um, benchmark and you could trade both of them. And that actually could mean you could lower your risk adjust, uh, you could improve your risk adjusted return. You could lower your risk. So that's good. So we see 0 0.3, great. And then um, we've got alpha here. And alpha is um, effectively, it's similar to the compounded annual return. But alpha means these are all the returns that are returns uncorrelated to the benchmark. So you know, the benchmark obviously makes a return. And, and, and and if we make the same return, then then you know if we just trade the benchmark, then our alpha is effectively zero, because the alpha is the intercept of of the linear regression between our benchmark and our um, strategy returns. And so if if they're both the same, right, it's zero. And so alpha is what you call an idiosyncratic return. It's also a measure of the skill of the per, of the trader, right? So the higher alpha is the more skillful or the more skill you have in generating returns that are not uh, just, uh, you know, the returns you get from the market. Does that make sense? So like you say, like kind of that the alpha is like the higher, the better. And the higher means the, the yeah, the more profit you're kind of like getting, right? It's not just more profit. Like you, it's, it's profit. Basically, alpha tells you all the profits mm -hmm. that are completely detached or, or uncorrelated to the profits of the benchmark. Right? Okay, got it. Mm -hmm. and, and so basically, that alpha is also a measure of your skill. How skillful mm -hmm. are you? You know, how good is your strategy? How skilled is your strategy? So you remember that um, we, we had a, a, a CAGR of about 7.5 yeah so that's your compound annual gross return four of the seven four percent of the 7.5 percent are basically returns that don't come from the benchmark and three uh uh three percent of that are returns that are directly related uh to the to the to the benchmark right so so it basically tells you in essence, what is what is your skill as as a as a trader or as a money manager or whatever? Mm -hmm. okay. And so, what you want is basically a low beta and a high alpha. Mm -hmm. And cool. What what is a high alpha? What would you say? Like, oh, it really depends. So so um, you know, obviously, 
four percent is 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 not too bad. Um, it's not phenomenal, but but it's okay. Uh, the higher the better, you know. If if you get an alpha of, if we, if you get an alpha of twenty percent, you're already there with the very best in the business, basically. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so four is it is is reasonable. Okay. So now here, here there's just uh, gives you a list of the drawdown periods. It's not so interesting. And and you remember this plot? Mm -hmm. This plot is basically and now we're plotting the compounded uh, returns. We we actually plotted the non-compounded returns early on. Quantstats plots you the compounded returns. Yeah, and you can see obviously you know our benchmark makes quite a bit more. Now, interestingly, when you log scale your compounded returns, you end up with the uh, non-compounded returns. Just mm -hmm. this is basically pretty much the same plot as we had before. So this is so they do it the other way around. They they take the not the compounded returns and they log scale them, and then um, you effectively get the non-compounded returns. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, this is interesting. Mm -hmm. This is what you call volatility matched. So they're basically matching or, or they're, they're basically increasing or decreasing the amount that's invested in your strategy to match the volatility of the benchmark. And so what you can see here is that they both are pretty much similar, which is also why the sharp ratio is also similar. Okay. So so we got a very, you know, in in, in essence, the performance of these strategies is quite is quite similar. Thank <laughs> you.